Pinot Grigio, and Molto Popolare in Italia. You may have noticed that I love all things Italian, and our grape today is kind of a big deal in Italy. The French call it Pinot Gris, and the Italians call it Pinot Grigio. Americans call it both and drink a lot of it. The only real difference between the name is the origin. It's named after the pinkish gray grape, Gris means gray in French and grigio means gray in Italian. So today I should probably be tasting wines from France and Italy, but I'm not. I like Italy better, so deal with it. Let's start with our first wine. All right, so for our first wine, actually, first first, there is a dog in the background. That's Cody. <laughs> He's, uh, he bounces back and forth between being my sous chef and my wine connoisseur, although currently I think he's asleep. Anyway, for our first wine, we're going to do a, what's called German, and I could be pronouncing that wrong. I really don't know, don't judge. But it's a Pinot Grigio from Italy, and it is a 2009, and a screw cap. Which one of these days I'll do a whole episode on screw cap, I swear. I know I keep mentioning that and then not doing it, but I will. I like screw caps, they're way easier. A fun thing about Pinot Grigio in general is that the experts, if you will, on wine <laughs> recommend Pinot Grigios for um, eating or drinking before you actually eat. So they're great to prime your palate and we all know how I feel about drinking without food. Big fan. And this time the experts actually recommend it. So it's a good one. Let's smell it. <clears throat> hmm. It's got a lot of like honeysuckle, or maybe a, a, a melon, honeydew melon. It is more, it's sweet, but not um, chokingly sweet. You, you know, if it's like way too sweet, it's just a really light, sweet smell. Hmm, okay. I think it might be a little too cold. <laughs> I think we did just pull it out of the refrigerator. Um, hmm. Sort of some effervescence, but the effervescence almost comes like in the back of your throat, which is weird instead of like right up front. Um, and it's a uh, chalky and kind of, it's not tannic like you would think, but it's more the, the way your mouth feels is um, kind of chalky. It's that sort of feel. Um, Definitely not very fruity, which I tend to associate with Pinot Grigios as being really, really fruity, but um, it's maybe like, you know, okay. I said it smelled like honeysuckle, but it does also taste like honeysuckle. If you ever actually pulled the stem of the honeysuckle and got that one little drop of the sugar water that comes from the honeysuckle, it's that really mildly sweet flavor of the honeysuckle that's sort of coming across. Here. At any rate, I think it would be good with uh, like oysters. If you like raw oysters or, or an area where those are more prevalent, um, it would be really good with it. Or even some, pretty much any seafood dishes, whether you're having maybe even ceviche. You know, I think that this wine is probably going to be a much better wine when paired with some food. I don't think that it's necessarily a sipping wine. Um, and even though I just said that Pinot Grigios are good at before dinner. I actually think that this specific one is gonna need the intricacies that adding food with it really adds to it. So that's what I think. <laughs> so you may have noticed that there are a lot of wines that start with the word Pinot. I mean, really, we have Pinot Noir, Pinot Grigio, Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc. It's kind of outrageous. Well, actually, researchers at UC Davis determined that the DNA is extremely similar between Pinot Noir and Pinot Grigio, and the color mutation happened centuries ago, which was a genetic mutation. I don't know, it's weird. Oh, and one more thing. A little bit of wisdom from our dear friend Ernest Hemingway, who said, and I'm gonna read this so I don't mess it up. He said, in Europe, we thought of wine as something healthy and normal as food and also a great giver of happiness and well-being and delight. It was not a sign of snobbism, nor sophistication, nor of a cult. It was as normal as eating and to me, as necessary. I agree. So let's move on to our wine under nine. 
Okay, so for our wine under nine, we have Benvolio Pinot Grigio, and it is from the Friuli region of Italy, which is in Northern Italy. Um, also, I just really like saying Benvolio Pinot Grigio. <laughs> it just kind of flows off your tongue, you know what I mean? Um, and it is also, or no, it's a 2010, so it's a little bit newer than our other one. So the, the region that this comes from is one of the main regions for Pinot Grigio in Italy. That's where most of them come from. So it should be good because that's what they do there. Hmm. Okay, already from the smell, honest to God, I like this wine better than the more expensive one. <laughs> it's more like what I think of when I think of a Pinot Noir, or a Pinot Grigio. Not a Pinot Noir, different thing entirely. Um, it's, it's a lot sweeter, it's a lot fruitier, it's got some, um, oh, there's a very specific thing that I can't think of. Almost like just honey, which is not a normal <laughs> wine descriptor, but it, it, it's just uh, the really sweet, but not sweet like sugar smell of like honey, apple, even some pear, like a really nice ripe juicy pear. Mm. Oh, interesting. It's actually um, not quite as sweet as it smells, uh, which I like because I don't really like super sweet wines. Um, but it smells really sweet and nice and gets you in that mood. And then when you taste it, it's actually a little bit milder than that. And you do get the pear and you do get the green apple, sort of the more like sour fruits rather than super, super sweet. This wine I can definitely see drinking before dinner as you know a primer for your palate for food, um, or just sipping uh, on a cool, not cool, warm day, <laughs> warm day for lunch. Um, really easy to drink, no tannins, not really any acidity, but it doesn't lack character for lacking the tannins and the acidity. It still has some pretty good flavors. I think I like it better than the other one because it's more in the traditional style of a Pinot Grigio. And it's just more of a sipping wine than a wine to pair with food. And I think I don't normally think of Pinot Grigios as being a wine that should need to be paired with foods. And this one fits that, that bill a little bit better than our other wine did. I think this is a wine that you don't really have to think about when drinking it. Uh, it doesn't call your attention to it unnecessarily. You just sort of taste it and drink it and uh, get a little tipsy and move on with your day. Um, or go to sleep, <laughs> whichever, whichever comes first. No, so I like it. I think it's a great drinkable wine. Well, that does it for Pinot Grigio, Pinot Gris, Pinot whatever episode of Real Wine. Thanks for watching. And as always, feel free to comment. Let me know what you're thinking. Subscribe to our channel. And if you make a wine that you'd like us to feature, send me a message. Ci vediamo un'altra volta. Drink up.